Hey guys, welcome back. As promised in my last video, this video is about showing you how Tesla is going to reach ten to $20,000 per share in 2030 pre-split. Now this video is going to be a little bit boring, but I'll try my best to entertain you guys along the ways and show you how exactly Tesla is going to reach ten to $20,000 per share. And I will show you a spreadsheet done by Stephen Mark Ryan or Solving the Money Problem. He's a retail investor that understands Tesla better than institutional investors and certainly better than me. And that's why I paid for his information and I'll be sharing with you guys today. Now this spreadsheet is done by him in 2021. A lot of things are not accounted for like the increase in average starting price, increase in raw material price, or war going on in Russia and Ukraine. I did not share this spreadsheet on YouTube publicly because I feel that it's disrespectful to share his intellectual property online while he's offering it on Patreon. But now that things have changed in 2022, this 2021 spreadsheet is outdated but it's still useful for us to understand how Tesla is going to reach ten to $20,000 per share in 2030. Okay, without further ado, let's dive right in to the spreadsheet and we will see how Tesla is going to reach ten to $20,000 per share pre-split by 2030. Okay, so what I have with me right now is the base case for Tesla in 2030. There is a bull case, there is a bear case, but we will use base case. Now let's take a look at 2022 base case scenario. We have Fremont, Shanghai, Austin and Berlin. Now these four factories are projected to produce for Fremont 542,000 cars. Shanghai 742,000, Austin 158, and Berlin 158,000. Now Austin and Berlin has been delayed, especially Berlin because of bureaucracy, and Shanghai has been locked down for close to a month for quarter two, and this has significantly affected the number of cars they produce. Now he projected that in 2022, for his base case, that there will be 1.6 million cars produced. Now as I've mentioned before, Tesla is a fixed cost business. What do I mean by fixed cost business? What I mean by fixed cost is that the giga factories, the expense are fixed. The labor is fixed. The machinery is fixed. The only variable input of expense is the raw material. So let's say in the same amount of time, let's say for example one month, you produce 150 cars versus you produce 100 cars. The 150 cars take the same amount of space, same amount of labor, same amount of machinery. The only difference is the raw materials. Hence, in the manufacturing business, if you are able to produce as much products as possible in the shortest amount of time, you will make a lot of money or a lot of profit margin. So now we know that Austin and Berlin has delayed Q2 Shanghai lockdown for close to a month. This will cause a significant impact in revenue and hence profit margin. So for 2022, Stephen McRyan predicted that there will be 78% increase in production, which is not going to be the case going forward. It is probably closer to 55 to 60% or even 50 to 55% growth rate. And now because we are entering a multipolar world, because of resource rich nation trying to fight one another, especially Russia, Ukraine, and Russia's tension with the West, there are sanctions going on, so raw material prices are skyrocketing. And this will cause a significant increase in cost of doing business. And hence Tesla has passed the cost down to consumer, increasing the average selling price of a vehicle. So the ASP now, aka the average selling price of a Tesla vehicle, is probably closer to $55,000 if I'm not wrong. Now how do you get the average selling price? You get the average selling price by taking automotive revenue divided by the total number of cars delivered for the quarter and you will get ASP. Now in his 2022 valuation model, he predicted that there will be 63.4 billion of automotive revenue. That comes from taking 1.6 million cars produced times the ASP and you will get 63.4 billion of revenue. And he projected that there will be 26.5% gross profit margin Meaning to say every $1 in revenue, 26.5 cent is gross profit. Now in 2022, he has also factored in that 2022 FSD will be soft and there will be 16% of total vehicles that will take on the FSD. And he calculated the FSD take rate of 16% times the fleet size times the monthly subscription and that will generate the FSD revenue. But for us to be conservative, I think for 2022, we have to take out FSD revenue, which is about 1.4 billion in this case. Is still not significant so that will not affect the valuation so much now in his valuation model he included insurance insurance money cost of $75 0.8% take rate means less than 1% take rate of the total fleet size of 3.5 million cars that's running around and this brings in 25.5 million of revenue and 27% gross profit margin so it's not significant as well and he projected in 2022 that energy revenue is 3.2 billion and it is not significant and he projected that energy gross profit margin is making 0%. The total net profit he projected is 14.2 billion with an earnings per share of $13 per share and giving a multiple of 105, a valuation of 
1,494 billion or 1.5 trillion and hence the share price is $1,300 pre-split, about $406 post-split. Now this information is actually useful in how you project Tesla stock price. Let's say for example, things didn't go well, Tesla is not able to produce so much cars, automotive revenue will be affected, gross profit margin will be affected because Tesla is a fixed cost business. However, the revenue would have increased because the automotive ESP has increased from $39,000 to about $55,000. That's a significant increase. For 2022, conservatively, I will take away the FSD, I will take away insurance. And in 2022, interest rates are going to rise dramatically. The global money balloon is tightening and money will have to be selective and hence valuation of multiples will come down. So for me, I wouldn't throw in a 105 multiple for Tesla right now. And hence, I'm net bearish or neutral on Tesla's valuation right now. But okay, today we are not talking about 2022's valuation, but we are projecting to 2030 and going forward about how Tesla is going to be worth 10 to $20,000 per share for 2030 onwards. So let's not get off topic and we'll go right back in. So for 2023, he projected that Fremont is going to reach a 585,000 capacity, Shanghai almost to a million, Austin and Berlin managed to ramp up to 590,000. Honestly, if not for the macro environment being bad, I would think this is possible, but as of my knowledge now, I think these numbers for 2023 is a bit too ambitious and I'll park them on the bull case. So just quickly go through with you 2023 what changed. Delivery growth rate at 67.8%. ASP came down. Revenue is at 104 billion. Gross margin slightly increased because Tesla is a fixed cost business. And he increased FSD take rate to 20% and that gives a 2.9 billion revenue. It is 10% of automotive revenue. Everything is still not significant, it's still quite logical. It is not insane bull case, insane bear case, it's still logical. I can still see that things is going to play out this way. It's just that the X factor is FSD. Whether or not FSD will be soft, how much take rate is still a mystery. Now in 2024, he projected 1 million production for each factory except for Fremont, which I kind of agree, Austin and Berlin is bigger than Shanghai. But Shanghai is expanding another Giga factory, which he did not have the information back in 2021. Now at this point, going from 2023 to 2024, things have actually changed. He significantly lowered the delivery growth rate to 38.17%. And this is what I feel is logical. You can't keep multiplying by 50% growth rate every year. The number will go bonkers. Automotive ASP came down again. The revenue increased. Profit margin increased because fixed cost business. Now the fleet size is 9.9 .9 million. This is something you have to keep a lookout for. Because eventually there will be robo taxis. But let's see if 2024 he accounted anything for robo taxi. F again FSD take rate 6.5 billion. You can factor this in, you can factor this out. Insurance 4% take rate at $61, giving a 300 million revenue and 101 million gross profit. Now, in 2024, he actually included a robo taxi fleet. He estimated that 0.03% of the 9.9 .9 million Tesla fleet will be used as robo taxi. So it will be about 2,485 robo taxis with charging $1.60 per mile driven to consumers. And Tesla will take a platform fee of 24%. Now, robo taxi can operate almost 24-7. They don't have to sleep, don't have to eat, don't have to take vacation. They can just drive all day, except for the time that they need to charge. So almost 24-7, and hence they can drive a lot of miles. Now, those miles that they drive, you have to this. Maybe you have to take away 40-50% to 50 of miles being wasted because you have to go and pick up people, and hence the car might be empty, one third to a half a time. So a simple calculation for robo-taxi revenue will be taking the effective miles times $1.60 and you will get the revenue. So I think it's quite logical for him to put 2024 have 0.03% to test out because FSD might not be ready. There are a lot of pending approval, bureaucracy, things will slow down. Maybe I see from 2025 onwards, then we will have robo taxis. He put it, he parked the number at 2024 and it's actually not bringing much revenue or profit. So it's fine. It's not going to affect much on Tesla stock price. What I noticed, however, is Tesla energy starting to bring in revenue. We can see that Tesla revenue increased from 4.8 billion to 7.3 billion and the gross margin for energy increased from 8% to 12%. Before that, we are making 0% margin. Now, why is this the case? You can think of Tesla as a battery company. The battery is the core component. They manufacture themselves, and they also take from the suppliers. Now, these batteries initially deployed into cars first because cars are making the most amount of revenue and hence the profits. When you manufacture in volume, you will have economy of scale and you will drive down the cost of batteries. And the good thing about batteries is that they can be two separate components, right? The batteries in Tesla cars, they are limited to the size of the car and they are moving and hence they will need different chemical components to make up the batteries. However, in energy storage for Tesla Energy, you can have batteries that are not limited to the size 
and these batteries are stationary hence you can use different elements that are cheaper and in abundance to make all these batteries for energy storage they are stationary and can be bigger in size and as you get better in manufacturing the gross margin will increase just like tesla cars going from model s model x model 3 model y now for 2024 he threw in a multiple of 92 an evaluation of 3,492 billion aka 3.4 trillion or stock price of $3,000 earning per share of $34 now all these are numbers that you have to go and adjust based on interest rates because interest rates will determine the multiples now in 2025 Austin and Berlin increased production to 1.4 million it's not a surprise because these factories are bigger than Shanghai and he projected a 5 giga factory producing 180,000 delivery growth production growth is 32.47% ASP come down again, automotive gross profit at 55.5 billion, FSD take rate at this point is 40%, things get exponentially better and it will be a no brainer and maybe by then Tesla will prioritize selling cars to consumers that take on the FSD. Now interesting enough he actually included FSD licensing profits. What this means is that other car makers they do not have the capability to develop their own full self driving software and hence if they don't want to get eliminated by competition they will have no choice but to subscribe to Tesla FSD and they will have to start to pay $100 for FSD times 44.6 million cars and that will derive a 12.4 billion of revenue so I'm not so sure about this but it may happen it may or may not happen depending on the success rate of FSD so all these are scenarios that are possible you have to ask yourself what probability this will happen now for me because I read books about super intelligence I understand machine learning I have first hand experience playing against AI and watching them getting better and better and being the best than the best players. So to me, I understand that things will evolve exponentially, especially dealing with AI. And to get to that point, the ingredients you need are basically data, neural nets, dojo, and a dedicated AI team. And these are what Tesla have that other car makers do not have. If you were to weigh the input and outcome like this, you will say that if not Tesla, then who else can do it, you know? So to me, it is only Tesla that can do it. It is more like a question of when they can do it and how things are going to get approved. And also because bureaucracy will happen, people will try their best to block this kind of thing from happening. And maybe I feel that this 44.6 million fleet of cars taking on FSD, I myself am not so sure about this happening in 2025, but we shall see. Now insurance generated 234 million, I just commented there's nothing there's nothing exciting I want to talk about for insurance 2025. Now for Robo Taxi he increased 0.03% to 1% of total fleet. So it might not be significant looking at the numbers, but it's actually 33 times increase. Now the fleet size increased from 2485 to 148,000 of cars running around with a cents per mile of $1.28. 24% platform fee? Total miles driven 3.8 billion. So if you were to calculate the gross revenue is 1.2 billion, gross margin 76%, 879 million of gross profit generated from robo taxis. Now do I think these numbers are ridiculous? I do not think so. My concern is the authority, the regulations, the approval. And calculating 1% of the total fleet size at 2025 is not a number that is impossible, but we have to take note how to play with the valuations because these are factored into the stock price. So it is actually not that hard to project your own Tesla stock price based on your own understanding of Tesla. You can throw in your own numbers that you believe is true, throw in the multiples that you believe is right, and then you do a calculation based on there. So basically your own understanding of Tesla manufacturing, how fast will FSD be solved? Will Robotaxi be approved? How are they going to scale energy? And the fifth is probably insurance, maybe supercharging or this will take place, the small transport as a service stuff. Then you will be able to determine Tesla share price and maybe trade options from there. I don't know, up to you. Okay, so to speed things up for 2025, multiples of 85, 5 trillion market cap, $4,975 stock price, earnings per share of $59. Again, I explained the energy, they get better. Okay, one interesting thing that I missed out just now is that he actually projected that Tesla bot will come in 2025. There will be first 5,000 bot selling at 25,000 per unit, gross margin of 25% per bot. And interesting enough, he feels that it's going to be a subscription model, meaning to say that these bots are not a one-time off sale, but they charge you $200 per month to do the work. But Tesla is going to charge $200 on AGI, Artificial General Intelligence, to get these bots working on things. And this means that the more bots you put out there, and imagine for each bot, you charge a subscription fee per month 
of $200 too. So the goal is to faster scale up as much Tesla bot as possible and that will bring in all the money and that's how Tesla will get insane amount of valuation. Now the question is will there be 5,000 bots in 2025? I'm not so sure. So you do your own calculation and see if things get logical. So as of now things are not insane yet because Robotaxi doesn't bring in much, Tesla bot doesn't bring in much, FSD no. It's all still automotive revenue. So the automotive revenue will still bring in half of what Tesla is going to be valued at. And it is okay, you know, the, all these other things are all extra that will come in and compound later on. So that there are more things to do going forward, 2025, 2026, 7, 8, 9. So let's go back to the automotive revenue, which I mentioned will cover more than half initially of how Tesla is going to be valued. So if you were to look logically, if not for the macro environment, Tesla can grow at 78% this year, no doubt about it. But because of macro, something went wrong, we are probably at 50 to 60% growth rate this year. And if you were to extrapolate out the numbers and see, we are going from 78% to 67%, 38, 32%, 36.5%, 39.54%, 33%, 25.2%, 20% growth rate, 14% growth rate. It is all quite logical, it's diminishing compounded effect. So we know that these numbers are not delusion, it is still logical. Things will compound slower as you get bigger. And it's actually okay, they're in sync by the 20 million target per year of cars produced by 2030. Now I speak to my friend Bunti about this, about whether or not Tesla will be able to sell 20 million cars. Yes, they may be able to produce 20 million cars by 2030, but will they be able to sell 20 million cars a year? And I think that is an interesting question we have to ask ourselves because it comes from a more realistic standpoint. And these are the questions you have to ask yourselves too. For me, I stand somewhere in the middle still thinking about this, but maybe I'll share more thoughts when I have a conclusion. Okay, now let's go to 2030 and see if the numbers are realistic for us to reach more than $10,000 per share pre-split. Now for 2030, it is 8 years from now. What will happen is, Tesla will produce 18.9 million cars, so short of 20 million. So in its base case, it is actually 1.1 million short of the target of 20 million. So again, Tesla cars are like toy cars. They stem, 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 giga casting, and they have cheap cost of production. So this may actually happen, coupled with 4680 batteries. So on the manufacturing side, it's already heavily engineered to be efficient, to be cheap cost of production, and to be fast, to control the time cost of producing a single unit of product. So 2030, can they produce 20 million? So for me, I would say that for manufacturing business, if you have the know-how, the knowledge of doing things, and you will keep improving, things will be better and better each factory they create and they might even come up with new things and more innovative ideas than the current 4680 giga casting. So again, it is not impossible, assign a probability to it. So for 2030, delivery growth rate of 20%, automotive average selling price came down to $30,000 per car, you drive down the cost of the car, you increase the demand of car. So that will give you about $578 billion of revenue from automotive alone, selling 18.9 million cars at $30,000. So my concern here is, if you drive down the cost to $30,000, you're selling at $30,000, will the gross profit margin still increase to 36%? If you sell cheaper, by theory, your margin should squeeze, but he increased his margin to 36%. Maybe because they think that Tesla is a fixed cost business with operating leverage. So this might still be possible, but I will question that 36% gross profit margin. Now in 2030, Tesla fleet size is 78.2 million. So that's the thing, you know, like these numbers are quite crazy but it might play out this way also, if there are no better competitors. So in 2030, there is a gross profit of $208 billion from selling $18.9 million of cars at $30,000 each. At this point, he factored in FSD take rate at 76%, because why not? The car can drive itself, it's an asset, it's a different product category. So factoring, so factoring in $200 monthly subscription times 12 months, times the fleet size of 76% times 78.2 million, you will get FSD revenue of 142.7 billion, gross profit at 138 billion. So these are the questions you have to ask yourself, how much gross profit will FSD be, you know, to run FSD? Licensing cost at 65, licensing profit at 65 billion, insurance generate 2 billion. Now RoboTaxi accounts for 15% of the fleet size, 11.7 million, of fleet size, cents per mile is interesting, came down to 42 cents. So if you are able to offer 42 cents per mile, it's actually quite significant. I think at this point, 
they will not be taxi drivers because taxi driver need to sleep, need to eat, only can drive half the time. They are driving on petrol, they are driving on cars that need heavy maintenance because it's an engine car. I'm not so sure now, but I think that the cost per mile for taxis right now with a human driver is about $2.40. So if you are able to offer at $0.42, cent, theoretically you are eliminating all the taxi drivers and that's why it is possible to have 11.7 million of robo-taxi fleet charging a platform of 24%. The numbers are quite insane, 740 billion miles and that will bring you a 56.6 billion robo-taxi gross profit. Tesla bought sales, 1.5 million created, $25,000 ASP. Bought itself, you generate 9.4 billion in manufacturing and through AGI money costs, you generate another 7.4 billion. So energy generates 82.6 billion, energy gross profit generate 26.4% gross profit margin. I actually kind of agree with this 26.4% margin at 2030 because manufacturing will get better there will be more innovative ways to do things but these are all projections okay and tesla will and tesla will generate 507 billion of gross profit in 2030 now that's insane and a net profit of near 400 billion <clears throat> now that's generating a whole profit that the valuation is equal to a company like tsmc it's about 400 billion valuation this is 400 billion net profit. So is it possible for Tesla to get to this point? I would say not impossible. A lot of things have to a lot of things have to go well and Tesla is good at executing and getting things done. Now even if all these things do not go as well, Tesla will still be worth a lot because the manufacturing ground is already laid out. How you manufacture things like a toy car, giga cars, how you design the factories to be efficient so they don't waste time. You control the time cost of producing a single unit of product. And Tesla is doing a lot of things well. So manufacturing itself is the core to bring in all the revenue and profits so that they can reinvest and reinvest on other things so that other things can scale. So once you solve manufacturing problems, you can increase the fleet size and you can lower the cost of a Tesla car and hence more consumer will demand them because you can lower the price. And once you increase the fleet size, you can take cars that are not sold. You can operate as robo taxis or you can take away the steering wheel, take away the pedals and operate as robo-taxis. And even if you have surplus of batteries doing manufacturing cars and manufacturing robo-taxis, if you still have surplus of batteries, you can use it on energy storage. So there's a lot of vertical integration along the way. And if you continue to get better in manufacturing, cost curve for batteries will come down and things will become more and more affordable. And for me, I will keep a lookout on FSD development. FSD development is the most important because Tesla Bot is the end game. Tesla Bot requires good manufacturing, good battery, and AGI. And these are all three things that Tesla is good at. Tesla bot is a result of all these three things that Tesla is naturally good at. Manufacturing, batteries, and artificial general intelligence. These are all things that they are working on, they have already tried to solve, and Tesla bot, and Tesla bot is the result of that. So if you look at 2030, the valuation, you throw in a multiple of 57 because it's still going fast. You have a valuation of 22,000 billion, which is 20,000 stock price, with earnings per share of $351. By then, Tesla stock will split like crazy, lah, of course. So yeah, $20,000 pre-split or $6,666 post-split is what you'll get in 2030. I will be conservative and I will assign a 15% probability that all this happen and go well. Tesla, as of today's video, is about $820 post-split. So if Tesla were to just 10x 8 years from now to $8,200 per share post-split or worth $2,700 per share post-split, in 2030, I will be very happy really because it's really a 10x in 8 years. So if they were to be able to go $20,000 per share post speed, I think it's quite insane but things will have to go extremely well. But Tesla is not very good at punctuality. So it's a stock that I feel that most should just hold, buy and hold and do nothing with it. So for me, how I look at things is that I will save it in Tesla shares. I think Tesla is the best savings account. There are still a lot of ways of wealth creation. I do not agree that people should just keep buying stocks. You should learn how to use debt to your advantage as well like buying real estate for example but this is a topic for another day there are other ways of making money as well like value creation etc etc but if you have not figured out value creation yet then you have to delegate value creation to a company like tesla so that tesla can help you grow your wealth while you do nothing and try to figure out how to value create to get more wealth okay so that is it for today if i have helped you out with the valuation model do give this video a thumbs up Subscribe to my channel if you haven't, I'm trying to reach 2k subs. Thank you so much and I will see you next week.
from the heathens Got will, got fight, got pride, got reason If they wanna go eat, then you know I'm gone